All right, hello. Thank you everyone for joining us today for the Silver Chair Universe Presents Code Ocean. My name is Stephanie Lovegrove. I'm the marketing manager at Silver Chair. We're excited to have you with us today to learn more about Code Ocean. Uh, and we have with us Pierre Montagano, the director of business development at Code Ocean. Uh, we're delighted to have Pierre join us for our platform strategies meeting in um, September as well. So after this, if you want to learn even more, there's a recording of, of his wonderful talk um, on our website too. Uh, first, I'll just do a few housekeeping things before I hand it over to him. Um, we, everyone uh, has been muted, so if you have questions throughout the webinar, please type them into the chat box. We will have time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. The webinar is being recorded and a link will be sent to you after the talk concludes. Uh, finally, when it has concluded, you'll also get a brief survey. We'd appreciate if you could take a minute to complete the survey to help us improve both the universe program itself as well as the webinar series. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to Pierre. Thank you, Stephanie. And uh, thanks uh, uh, at Silverchair. I'm really excited to be part of the Silverchair universe. I think um, we uh, bring something um, really unique to the table. And I will um, uh, go into that right now in this presentation. I'm, I'm hoping everyone here can see my screen at this point. Um, and I'm just going to um, go into present mode here. So as Stephanie said, I'm the business director, uh, business development director for Code Ocean. And uh, just to give you some background on Code Ocean and why we came about, I wanted to start with this quote from uh, David Donahoe, and it's already it's all the way back from 1998. And he basically said an article about computational science in a scientific publication is not the scholarship itself; it is merely advertising of the scholarship. The actual scholarship is the complete set of instructions and data which generated the figures. And if we jump ahead. Uh, to today. Um, this is actually a quote from Victoria Sodden, um, who did a, a joint reproducibility workshop with us at Columbia University. Um, and she made two principal claims. First was virtually all published discoveries today have a computational component. And then the second claim that she made is that there is a mismatch between the traditional scientific process and computation, leading to reproducibility concerns. So, so why did what what is what does she mean, and why is code important as part of the scholarly record? As our data sets become larger and larger um, and more complex, uh, researchers more often than not are are deploying code in order to do the analysis. So, if we're actually curating the data, and there's been a lot of focus recently about curating the data along with the research, but if we're actually curating the data and not the mechanism in which the data was analyzed, then we're only actually curating half of half of the picture. And uh, more often than not, it's code that's used to analyze the data. Um, there are multiple languages, and CodeOcean supports a multiple, uh, multiple languages. And these are, are some open source and proprietary languages that we support. And if one were to do a, a search for uh, some of these languages on your platforms, you will find uh, a tremendous amount of results being returned. Um, if you do a simple uh, 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 you know, search for MATLAB on, let's say, the Oxford platform, there's over 10,000 results that return. So the, the point is, uh, our research is becoming more computational in nature, and researchers are deploying uh, uh, code in order to uh, analyze their data. And so uh, you might be asking yourselves, well, you know what? Uh, my researchers already uh, deposit their code in, in different repositories, including something like GitHub. Um, so why do we need CodeOcean? And CodeOcean came about because of the actual CEO, Simon Adar, when he was doing his research, he was interested in the narrative, but he was more interested in the actual algorithms. He was a spectral imaging engineer. And so these are the steps that he had to go and take in order to get one piece of code up and running. First and foremost, he had to find the code. You know, a lot of times there's a link to the code, uh, but others, uh, other times he actually had to write the PI and say, you know, I read your article, it seems very interesting, um, maybe pertinent to my research, can I have a look at the code? And then that was actually the easiest step that he had to do. 
After that, he had to make sure that he had the, you know, the, the right hardware, set up the environment, um, make sure that he had the right version of the code installed on his machine. And then he went through what a lot of researchers go, and there actually is a name for that, it's called dependency hell. You know, one, one file dependent on another file, dependent on another file. And it would take him sometimes months to get one piece of code running up in his machine. And when he finished his, his research, he decided this is the problem he wanted to tackle, and hence he started Code Ocean. So this really leads to uh, uh, you know, some reproducibility issues. And this slide, this survey, uh, this is a nature survey. Um, it's it's talking about all of science, but I think it makes the point that um, that we do have some reproducibility issues um, in in our field. And what really struck me about this uh, particular survey is not that researchers had trouble uh, that researchers had trouble reproducing other people's experiments. I, I can I can understand that, but they actually had problems reproducing their own experiments over a matter of time. And I think that the reason for that is that researchers aren't coders by nature, and they're not properly curating the code. And what I mean by that is uh, the right environment, the right version, uh, all the dependencies. And, and this is really where CodeOcean comes in. So this is an example of the CodeOcean widget. And think of this just like a YouTube widget. You can place this widget in, in any, any place, whether it be in a supplemental materials tab within the article. And it includes both the code, the data, and and, uh, and there's that little handy run button in the top right hand corner that allows anyone to execute the code in real time. So if we bump this out, this is another example of a, what we call a compute capsule. And a compute capsule is basically a combination of code, data, and environment. And it's all packaged in a Docker container. And people can simply hit the run button and execute the code. There's also uh, areas to place metadata and but the real magic is this environment button here on the top right. It tells uh, um, uh, the user, and it also, um, uh, and our, our, our process also brings the author through this step-by-step -step instructions to so that they deposit everything needed for their code to run. So right here, I know that this is uh, uh, some R code, it's 3.4. I know the exact version of R that was used. I know all the packages that were included. And these are the things that, uh, when I was getting back to that, that example, that researchers don't always necessarily curate when they're sharing their code. And um, the, the CodeOcean UI brings researchers through this process so everything gets curated and it's executable. That's the main thing. Um, the code isn't flat. It's not static. Researchers can hit this run button and they can actually execute the code. If they want, they can bring in uh, new data sets and run the code against their own data sets. They can augment the code. It's an interactive uh, uh, environment in which other researchers can um, uh, uh, fiddle with the code and, and experiment with the actual code. Um, and so this tackles both the reproducibility uh, aspect. Uh, so at the heart, we're a reproducibility platform but also it facilitates in reuse of code. So I'm actually going to now jump out and show you uh, that same compute capsule and, and what it looks like, right? So here are the, are the code files on this side. There's a little run script here. The data is below here. Um, and this data is so large that you would have to download it in order to view it. Um, we can see the environment tab here, right? And there's a run button here, and you can actually execute the code. And when I push this run button, it's actually executing the code in real time, right? And then afterwards, we're going to see an output, which are the results of the actual uh, code that, that uh, was delivered. So um, researchers now, if they wanted to, they could bring in their own data sets and rerun the code against their own data. They could actually go in here and start augmenting the code if they wanted to directly into the window. Right, and then rerun the code. The metadata would give you a description of what the code is, um, the license that the author chose to associate with the code or the, the computational environment, and the associated publication. There is a bi-directional link in CodeOcean between the, uh, the, the, the code and the article. And uh, one can embed it directly into an article uh, as was done here in, in this Cambridge example, right? So here is the actual code, 
right? And this is the actual widget within the article, and here are the results. And once again, if I wanted to, I could hit the run button and execute the code. And once I do, after that's finished, um, there will be uh, some results file uh, results files that will um, appear. And here they are, and I can actually hit the figures, and you will see that the figures here in this compute capsule are the same figures that you see in the article. So some other developments that CodeOcean allows for uh, partners within the Silverchair universe to do, uh, we've actually just started a, 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 a trial with Nature where we provide uh, a private a view only copy of the code and send it to the editors so they can include it in the peer review of the actual uh, uh, manuscript. So uh, peer review, uh, you know, we all know that 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 referees for the most part are are, are not are not paid, um, and if we can somehow facilitate um, uh, and and make their jobs a little bit easier, then this is of great value. So by providing uh, an environment in which the 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 reviewers don't actually have to get the code up and running on their own machine. They can simply uh, click a button and execute the code, and they can actually fiddle around with the code. Then this is of great value. So we've started um, this particular workflow as well, with uh, and we're doing trials right now with Nature, with Cell Press, and we're starting one with Elsevier as well. And specifically with Nature, we're working with three uh, um, uh, journals, uh, Nature Methods, Nature Biotechnology and the new Nature uh, Machine Intelligence Journal. So a little bit about our technology stack. Uh, can, we can support any s open source language. But before I actually go into that, I'll just tell you the basic uh, gist of, of, of CodeOcean. We're basically uh, Linux and we're built off Docker. So we're actually containerizing the code. Um, so think of it almost like a, a, a Tupperware container. We're putting everything in the container that's needed for the code to run. So there's no external dependencies outside of the container. And hence, anyone can run the code uh, from simple web browser. We support any so open source uh, languages, right? We also include proprietary language such as Stata and MATLAB. We support deep learning frameworks like Cafe and TensorFlow. And um, we've actually uh, integrated uh, Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Labs. Um, we've just actually launched our, our new UI, which is based off the Jupyter lab UI and so we're moving not only from a point of publication platform but now we're moving more and more into a daily use tool so uh, researchers could come to a particular article in your journal they could see the code there they could open the code window they could execute the code and if they wanted to then they could open an interactive session in a Jupyter notebook Jupyter lab we're also supporting our shiny and uh, um, uh, uh, and R as well and we also have, uh, we, 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 we leverage AWS for compute. So we have the scalable computing power and storage in AWS. However, that's not part of our technology stack. We could use any cloud, cloud service, uh, you know, in that regard. So this is what I was talking about. Now we can launch interactive Jupyter uh, machines and people can start interacting with the actual code. Um, we also support the ability to add multiple languages. Um, uh, people can combine, in this particular example, someone com co combined R and Stata in the same compute capsule. And as you can see from the top left-hand side, we also support versioning of the code. So just to say a little bit about that, uh, when, when authors uh, upload their code to CodeOcean, there is a verification process. Um, someone actually verifies that the code runs and delivers results. The, the, the person doing that is not a subject area expert. They're an algorithmic engineer. They're merely checking uh, to make sure that the code runs and delivers results. Um, if you wanted to include uh, this as part of your peer review process, that's where the subject area expert would come in. Um, and then the code that's actually published with the research uh, is given a DOI, and we can see that from uh, the metadata. Uh, and I'm going to go over here to um, that example here. You can see that we 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 give uh, the code um, a meta a, a DOI, and this DOI can be cited into the research. 
and then um, uh, and then if the, the 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 researcher wants to create a new version, then they can create a new version. But the version that's published with the research becomes almost the code record, uh, the the code of record, almost like the article of record. So we do support versioning, um, but uh, the code that's submitted with the article becomes the code 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 of record. Um, so if it's V2 that's um, that's that's uh, submitted with the article, then it's V2 that becomes the the the, co uh, the version of record. But other that you can go back to older versions of the code. Um, if someone submits the V1 with the article, but then later updates the code, uh, when someone comes to the article page, uh, they will see the V1 version. Uh, but when they launch into the Code Ocean environment, if there's a V2, it will be there'll be a little toaster here to indicate there was a newer version of the code. But the code that gets submitted with the article is the the code of record. So. Um, sort of uh, in, in conclusion here, what is CodeOcean? Uh, CodeOcean is an online code execution platform that integrates with any, any scholarly platform. And as being part of Silver Chair Universe now, this is available to you um, in your platform. Authors can publish their code and data and computational environment. This is the important part of uh, the computational environment so that others uh, can execute the code um, uh, you know, at point of publication. And this is done through the Code Ocean widget, which can appear at any point in the article or in, in, in a supplemental materials tab um, within the article. Um, we also have the ability to provide you with uh, a, a, a private view only a copy of the code to be included in the peer review process. Uh, users uh, and readers. Uh, because the code is executable and there's confidence in the code, uh, can start building upon others' published findings. And there's a really simple way of uh, for 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 users once they're in in the in the platform to simply duplicate the code. Right? This is a duplication. I'm actually duplicating this piece of code. And then if I wanted to start working on it, I can create a derivative work. Uh, and the metadata, the the attribution will be there to the original authors. Users uh, uh, will get the same computational environment the original author used. So there's no setup, there's no installation. You don't need anything special on your on your particular machine to access and run the code. Um, and we actually find out that a lot of authors, when they become familiar, and a lot of users when they become familiar with Code Ocean, they no longer have to hit that run button because they know that they're going to get the same results as the author did. Um, and we're, we're continuing to, to build upon Code Ocean and provide you with a suite of tools. As I mentioned, right now we have a Jupyter Live Machines that you can uh, 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 launch directly from Code Ocean. Uh, we've included code versioning. Um, there's a collaboration feature, which I will just show you in right now. Right? If we go back to our, 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 our duplicated uh, compute clapsule that I created, um, if I want to, um, I can um, collaborate with someone. And here I'm going to collaborate with um, someone. And I can give them view rights or edit rights to the code. So the use case here for the most part is it ends up a lot of the times that someone on the research team, teams now, research, when people are writing articles, there's multiple uh, authors, uh, someone uploads the code, and then a lot of times they will share the code with the team before they hit that publish button. And uh, finally, um, well, next to final, you can export the compute capsule and works outside of CodeOcean. CodeOcean is an open access, open platform. We're not really concerned with lock-in. Um, so if you are a researcher and you want to um, get into um, um, a particular compute capsule, if you find this comp compute capsule interesting and you actually want to download it, export the compute capsule, you can export the whole entire compute capsule, including the data, uh, the code, um, and the Docker file.
Finally, we publish compute capsule. Publish compute capsules have a minted DOI um, so that uh, authors not only can get um, citation for their own work, but they can get uh, a, a citation directly for their code. And there is that bi-directional link between the code and the article. So now, actually, I'm going to stop it here for any questions. Um, Wonderful. Thank you, Pierre. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat box yet, so if anyone has any, please feel free to type those in, and we'll be happy to um, address those. Um, this is, it's, it's wonderful to see, you know, there's so many use cases, obviously, for researchers, and it does so much to help them. But it's also really interesting, um, it, I know it, this was a discussion um, during the Platform Strategies panel, was the value that it adds for publishers as they look to enhance their content in various ways, make it more useful, um, drive more people to it, that having the, the actual, um, not only the code, but having the compute abilities itself right there with the article really adds a lot of value. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so far, uh, what, what's very interesting, if I can share a little bit about how people are interacting with the code. Um, right now, we uh, have um, 500 uh, uh, compute capsules uh, published on our, our platform, and about 99% of them are associated with published research. Um, we also um, have what's very interesting is we have a good percentage of people that are actually duplicating the compute capsule and for me these are real indicators of reuse um, and, uh, and, 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 and and it'll be interesting to see you know uh, we've only been actually uh, uh, around for about 13 months but as we as we we, we we look on it'll be interesting to see what derivative works come out of the current compute capsules on the code ocean platform mm -hmm. absolutely um, and uh, as Pierre mentioned you know with code ocean being a part of the silver chair universe one of the benefits for um, silver chair clients is, is that the integration um, is there's no charge on the silver chair for the implementation um, and so it's kind of and it's a very easy uh, onboarding process. Um, one other nice thing is I know uh, that we've talked about having the, with the sc split screen offering, uh, it's a really nice way to feature that information alongside the text um, without breaking up the flow of the actual reading. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one, one option that I know a lot of people have expressed interest in. Um, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Right. No, I was just going to say uh, absolutely. And on Code Ocean, uh, we're we're not um, we're we're not charging publishers either. You know, because Silverchair is doing the work for the integration on 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 their side. Um, this is really a turnkey solution for 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 the Silverchair partners, and it's it's something that uh, doesn't cost the publishers any significant amount of money to implement. Um, all right, well, I'm not seeing any questions, um, so I, we might go ahead and, and wrap up unless there's anything you have to add. No, just really uh, looking forward to working with uh, partners. The other thing I would see is, as you can see from the compute capsules within CodeOcean, um, I think that there, a lot of times there's these preconceived bias that, that, that CodeOcean is really geared to the hard sciences, the STM. But that's not true. Uh, that we have a lot of use cases in the social sciences. Um, the, the example that I was showing you before, in Cambridge Core is from the social sciences. So this is something that, that it's, it's, it's applicable across, uh, across the disciplines. Wonderful. Well, thank you uh, so much again for joining us. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, and for um, clients, if anyone would like to follow up, if you have additional questions or interested in learning more about what an integration would look like, uh, please feel free to reach out either directly to Pierre or to your PDM at Silverchair. Um, and we'll be happy to continue the conversation. Uh, in the meantime, have a great rest of your day and hope to see you on a future webinar. Thanks very much, Pierre. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone.